Hi guys, I'm Cosmo. I'm here at Dean's shop in Glendale, California. I'm going to go inside and have a haircut and a conversation with one of the finest sleight of hand coin magicians in the world. Why don't you guys come on in? Dean. Yes. How, how did you get involved in magic? Well, when I was a kid, maybe 10 or 11, I used to frequent the magic shop at Disneyland. And I would stand there for hours and hours watching the guys do their thing behind the counter. That's when I realized I loved magic, but I didn't really start until years later. Loved to watch them do sponge balls, and uh, I guess it was the Svengali deck, and I used to buy a few tricks, take them home and play them on my friends, and then I'd forget about it. Years went by, and um, there was a guy at the tennis courts who knew a card trick. He showed it to all the people that would come to the little booth, and I was one of them. And he did this trick, and it just absolutely blew my mind. I had to know how this trick worked. I asked him, and he said, well, magicians don't tell their methods. Of course, he wasn't really a magician. He just knew that one card trick. It would be to learn something that he would want, and maybe he would trade. So I went and got uh, a book. I think it was Walter Gibson's book on card magic. Hello. And I learned, um, I think it was Di Vernon put out the, the trick with the five-card mental, it's called where you lay five cards out and you have them think of one. Mm -hmm. And I think the four of hearts was the fourth card at that. I started cutting hair in my old shop. And Monty Smith used to come in. And he knew a card trick, and so did I. I knew a couple of card tricks. He knew a few. And we traded. From that point on, we'd get together every day, every week for lunch and um, practice magic tricks. At this point, were you doing, were you doing gigs? No, I was only doing a few gigs for free because at the time I didn't feel I was really a true professional. I felt that I was just an enthusiast. So I, uh, you know, once in a while I'd get a $25 fee for a show and somebody would ask me to come to their parties that they'd pay me more. And I was a little afraid at that time because I didn't know if I was worthy to be paid as a professional. So I did a bunch of free shows and then decided that, hey, I might as well join the club and make a few bucks and do something I love. And it went from there. And then uh, how did the Carson thing happen? So I guess I was performing for maybe six or seven years at that point professionally. And Doug Malloy was working at Hollywood Magic. And one day, and I think it was around 1987, I just happened to call the Magic Shop asked Doug a question. He says, Dean, you're not going to believe it. Johnny Carson's here. For years, I used to watch his show, and I used to think, boy, it'd be neat to meet him. He seems like such a neat guy. Of course, I'm sure everybody felt that way. I'm at, so I'm in Eagle Rock, probably 15 minutes away, and I, I said to my wife, I said, honey, I got to go. I just packed my pockets with a deck of cards and a few coins and a close-up pad and flew to Hollywood. Walked in Hollywood Magic, and there was Johnny at the end of the counter doing some coin tricks with Doug, Doug Malloy. Wow. From Malloy Modern Magic. Thank you, Doug. So he says, he says, here's Dean. He is my friend. Uh, he does coin magic, and uh, would you like to see him do something? So I did one of my coin tricks for him, and he went crazy. He went, wow, that was really good. I've never seen anything like that before, and I'm thinking, well, he's probably just being nice to me. But it, I could tell he was impressed. And so I... I thought to myself, I just got to do magic for Johnny Carson. And Doug, so Doug says, here, Johnny, here's my card in case you need anything. And I'm standing there thinking, what do I say? Do I give him my card? No, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to play it cool, right? right. So Johnny leaves the shop. And Doug and I are standing there going, wow, that was neat. Just think, we got to do magic for Johnny Carson. So uh, I, I, uh, it, the following week, I was cutting Johnny Gon's hair. And... Um, I said, John, I got to do magic for Johnny Carson last week, and he got all excited. He says, you're kidding. He says, you know, John Shrum's the art director on his show, and uh, I know John Shrum real well. 
and we need to hook you up. I said, all right. So I packaged up a close-up pad. I put in a trick. I can't remember what it was now. Um, I gave it to John Gone. He says, I'm going to give it to John Shrum, and he's going to make sure this gets on Johnny's desk. Uh, about a week after that, I get a phone call at home. My answering machine says, hello, Dean Dill. This is Johnny Carson. Uh, I'd like to talk to you. Give me a call when you get a chance. Well, my wife was there. She didn't want to pick up the phone because she was just going, oh, my gosh, Johnny Carson's calling. I want my husband to hear this message. So I'm going to save it for him. So I come back from the lumber yard. She goes, go listen to the, to the answering machine. And I just about passed out. I couldn't believe it. So I called him right back. And when I called him, Dean, um, thanks so much for the package. In fact, in the package, I wrote a note. And I said, if you're ever interested in learning any of these close-up tricks, uh, just give me a call. I'd be happy to to show you some of the coin magic that I showed him at the magic shop. So there he was on the phone. He says, uh, I'm interested. I got your note. I'd like to learn some of those things. When can we get together? I said, well, let me go look at my schedule. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I didn't have any schedule at that time because I was, I was so amazed that he called me. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't even think. So five weeks later, here I am driving the Ventura Freeway thinking, about 6 o'clock in the evening, thinking, I'm going to Johnny Carson's house. Right. Now, this is good. Amazing. This is good. The whole time I'm going, okay, I can handle this. You know, I'm the magician. I, got the, I think I have, uh, I'm in a good position because when you, when you do something like that and they're in awe of you, it's like you're the man for at least that moment. So right. I thought, well, this is really neat. But it's still I was nervous about it. So I get to Johnny's house. Uh, he invites me in. His wife comes, introduces me to Alex. And so we sit down and do magic for about four hours. But the interesting part about that evening uh, was the fact that he said, one of these days I want to have you on the show. Wow. And when I heard that, I thought, no, I couldn't have heard that right. Uh, he says, yeah, I'd like to have you on the show someday. Because he was pretty in awe of what I was doing, I could yeah, tell. Yeah. And so I thought, well, that's, the, uh, that's an opportunity of a lifetime. I said, at least I can go tell my friends and family that Johnny invited me on The Tonight Show. But I thought to myself, I said, boy, I don't know about that. On The Tonight Show? Whew. Boy, that was, a, that was a potent thought for me to think about. So if, I guess for the next three years, I would go to his house and show him stuff. And we'd hang out. One time I was there with Paul Gertner. And, and uh, I played tennis with him on his tennis court one time. And each time I was there... He would always ask me, he'd say, now, you know, let me know when you've got about 10 minutes ready because I'd like to have you on the show. And I, I used to, and I remember myself thinking and saying, oh, okay, Mr. Carson, uh, I'll let you know. The whole time thinking, I don't think I have the nerve to do this. I mean, I want to do it, but I don't think I have the nerve. Because, boy, it was scary to think about that. Here I am, a barber in Glendale, and... He's asking me to be on The Tonight Show. He doesn't even know if I can perform. Evidently, he had enough confidence in me to, to think that, you know, I should pull it off. So I think he was going to go off the air in about 1992, and it, I have been frequenting his, his place for about four years. And my wife and my friends kept saying, well, Dean, what's going on? How come you're not on the show yet? And I, I would just make excuses. <laughs> Like, well, you know, Johnny's not ready yet. Actually, I wasn't ready. So I thought, you know what, I, if I'm ever going to do this, I better do it now. So one of my last times at his house, he, he asked me the same question. And I said, I'm ready. Within a week, they were calling me. So I had two weeks to think about it. They changed the date one time uh, to Thanksgiving Day. And I figured, well, Thanksgiving Day, the day I die. <laughs> you know, I thought to myself, I wonder if I could be any more nervous going in front of a firing squad than I am right now. I'm going to be on the Tonight Show.